All right, good evening folks. Welcome to our video today on Monday. Um, today is February the 8th. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you've had a great weekend. Um, hopefully you were able to have um, good church services with um, your church and for our people of Hopewell Baptist. Um, I'm grateful for the good service that we had yesterday. And so uh, we're going to um, we're going to go ahead and get started here in our first video of this week. Um, we, as you can see here, we're going to be looking at uh, two brand new people, of course. Um, as you can see here, we're beginning off this week with the Apostle Peter and with Isaac of the book of Genesis. Okay, so please remember that our new schedule of these videos is three days a week. We do Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, okay? And so um, each video is about 20 minutes long, so just thank you for taking uh, some of your time and participating in our, in our videos. Okay, so our, uh, uh, as we begin here, I'd like to show you our results from Friday's video, okay? If you remember last week, we saw Luke the doctor win our first video, very big, um, 83%. Then Wednesday, we saw Lazarus win um, our second video. Uh, he won with 63%. Now, Friday, we had Timothy and James, the son of Zebedee. And so here are those results from Friday. We have 71% goes to Timothy and 29% goes to James, the son of Zebedee. So folks, I want to show you that that is a, uh, uh, I guess you could say a big surprise. Um, it is definitely the number 22 ranked person with a victory over the number 11 ranked Person. So, but to me, it is no surprise. Timothy has an incredible story, and I do predict that Timothy may have a great chance in this tournament. So, um, but anyway, we're going to start today with Peter and Isaac, and the winner of this will be paired up with Timothy in the second round. Okay, so let's begin our video today with looking at the Apostle Peter. Now, I would like to remind you that in um, that Peter, he was in our first tournament way back in uh, April and May and June last year. And uh, uh, Peter, uh, in that tournament, he made all the way to the third round and was one vote shy of making the fourth round which would have been the semifinals. So Peter did very well, and now that's why he is here in this big tournament, and he is the number six ranked person, okay? So here we go. The Apostle Peter. Folks, you know, I probably don't even have to say much about him. Uh, I, he is so famous. He is so well known. Um, when you talk about the New Testament, well, you're going to hear about Jesus most of all, and then probably you're going to hear either Peter or Paul's name will be the next one talked about. Uh, they're just so famous. There's so many stories we have of them. Now, I do want to point out, folks, that in these tournaments we've done, this being our fifth tournament, we have seen a lot of those bigger name, famous people in the Bible uh, not do so well in these tournaments. And that's because we're not trying to find who's the most well-known or who's the most famous. We're looking for the one that has the most inspirational story, okay? So, um, and you know what I mean? That their life touches you and I and all of us the most, Okay. But Peter has some incredible qualities, okay? Number one, um, 
Now, I can't tell you his whole life in this little short video, but um, folks, uh, he was not, uh, uh, he, how can I say this? He was a very common person when Jesus found him and he became one of the 12 apostles. But folks, we see something with Peter. Not only is he just one of the 12, which is an incredible position to have, but we see him assume the leadership role of the 12 apostles, okay? It's not necessarily that Jesus said, hey, you're going to be the leader. You know, normally, folks, those who get leadership uh, roles and positions, maybe even in a career or any, any sort of thing, are normally the ones who volunteer. They're the ones who work hard, they put in the effort, and they get those positions. Well, that's kind of what happens with Peter. We see in some of the key moments, he's the one that steps up, and he's the one who speaks up, and who does the dirty work. And uh, for example, he was the one of the 12 who got out of the boat and walked on the water with Jesus. And folks, it all came to the day when Jesus said to them, um, uh, who do you say that I am? And Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. The other 11 disciples or apostles, they were a little quiet in that moment, but Peter spoke up. And I believe that was the moment that Peter really became their leader. So I'm gonna start off number one here that he was the leader of the 12 apostles. Okay? Leader of the 12 apostles. Now, folks, I want to tell you, if you can hear some background noise in these videos, uh, we film these from our home and uh, there is a lot of traffic sometimes on the roads. And so I'm sorry if you hear that some, in some videos, okay? Um, but now the second thing that I want to tell you about Peter, if you go to the book of Acts, um, he, in Acts chapter 2, it was a very special day. And uh, it was called the day of Pentecost. That word Pentecost uh, literally means the 50th day of the Passover or after the Passover. And it was a festival. It was a Jewish festival. Thousands were gathered together. Well, guess what? Peter and the apostles were going to basically have church with them. Guess who spoke up? Guess who was the one who stepped up and began preaching? It was this man and the Bible says thousands got saved that day, and it was Peter that preached. So I'm going to say that he preached on the day of Pentecost. Okay. That was a very, very special day. Now, the next thing I want to tell you folks is a little bit later in his life, uh, from, especially from the time of um, his ministry with Jesus, then the, the book of Acts, you have to go about 20 years later. Peter's now an elderly man. Um, he's definitely still one of the biggest leaders in Christianity of that time, and he writes two books or two letters, and we have them in our Bible. They're called 1 Peter and 2 Peter. Um, um, he wrote those uh, for different reasons, trying to inspire Christians and correct wrong teachings. But anyway, that's a, that's a big thing. He wrote two books of the Bible. So I'm going to put up here that he wrote two and I'm just going to put NT, which means New Testament, okay? He wrote two New Testament books, okay? Now, I'm going to give you a little side point here. 
Okay, this is not going to be on the board. But folks, <clears throat> when you read the book of Mark, you remember the gospel according to Mark? Mark, what he wrote down in that book, he was not there. He didn't see this happen. History tells us that he got all of his information from Peter. Okay, so when you read the book of Mark, you're almost reading what you could almost call the gospel according to Peter, written by Mark, okay? So Peter definitely had his, his handprint, uh, uh, or fingerprint on, on the, the writing of the Bible, okay? But the last thing that I want to tell you is he met his end by being, by being martyred, which is, of course, killed for his faith, okay? He was martyred, okay? Um, actually, him and the Apostle Paul were both killed very close together uh, in time in Rome, okay? Um, but he was killed for his faith. Um, so that is the story, the incredible story of Peter. He needs no introduction. We all know who he is. He's number six in our tournament. Now, folks, I would like to turn our attention now, the second half of the video, to Isaac. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. You're probably thinking that you know your vote, that it is clearly Peter, okay? Now, I'm not going to disagree much on that, um, but, folks, I would like you to please keep an open mind as you hear the rest of the video and you hear about this man named Isaac. Because I believe as inspirational as Peter is, I think Isaac may be just as inspirational. Maybe just not as well known. So this ought to be pretty interesting. Let's see what happens here. Now, Isaac was in our second tournament. Back, we did that around, I think, July and August of last year. He was in the second tournament. In that tournament, he made it to the second round, and he was one vote short of making the third round. So he did very, very well in that tournament. That's why he has qualified to be in this new tournament here. The first thing that I want to tell you Everybody knows the name Abraham, okay? Probably one of the most famous people in the whole Bible, probably in the history of the whole world. Abraham was the man who God chose to start the nation of Israel. And God told Abraham, it's gonna, he said, I'm going to promise you, I'm going to make a covenant with you that... Uh, that through you and through your children, I'm going to make this great nation. Well, <clears throat> um, Abraham and his wife, they were waiting and waiting and waiting. They, weren't, they didn't have children yet, and it was discouraging to them. And, but they knew God had promised them. They, they, they said, you know, God said he's going to give us a child, and that's going to be where our great nation comes from. Well, folks, at a very old age, his wife gave birth to this young man right here, Isaac. He was the promised son. Okay, I'm going to start off by saying that. He was the promised son of Abraham. Okay? Amen. All right? Because if you know your Bible, folks, you'll know why I say the promised son. Because Abraham makes a decision, because it was taking too long, to go and marry a second wife. And, they, and he has a, a son by her named Ishmael. 
But God said, that is not the promised son. I'm going to give you a son by Sarah. And anyway, so he was the promised son. Now, we're told that when Isaac was a young man, probably a teenager, maybe about 17 years old, <clears throat> this is going to be the second thing here, we're told that his dad and he went to the top of a mountain and they were going to sacrifice on an altar. Well, they got up to the top and Isaac said, uh, Isaac said, Dad, uh, we don't have anything to sacrifice here. And well, it's a lot to the story, folks. But basically, Abraham put Isaac himself on that altar, his son, right here, Isaac. Now, Abraham was willing to sacrifice his son because God was testing him. God wasn't going to let him do it, but God was testing him. Well, you may be saying, well... What does that tell us about Isaac? Well, what it tells us, do you know in that story, Isaac doesn't complain. Even at a young age, he had such a confidence in God and a trust in God that he was willing to be sacrificed on that altar. He didn't complain. He didn't try to run away or come up with excuses. You know, that's a good thing for us to have today is a willingness to let God do whatever he wants to do in our life. So I'm going to write that second of all. He was willing to be sacrificed on the altar. Okay? Willing to be sacrificed on the altar. Um, I think you can read that story in Genesis 22, if I remember correctly. Now, the next thing is, guess what, folks? Just like his dad Abraham, when Isaac got to be an, a, 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 an adult, God reaffirmed the covenant to him and said, Isaac, just like I promised your dad, I'm going to promise you, you are going to be, uh, there's going to be a great nation from you and your children. But guess what, folks? Same situation as his dad. He was getting older, he and his wife, Rebecca, and no children. What I love about Isaac, one of the best things that I love about him is we're told that he prayed for, uh, for uh, children, okay? Now, that is a wonderful thing to do in, in general. But one thing that makes his so special is that he prayed, yes, he wanted the children, but he knew his wife wanted the children so much. And he prayed specifically for his wife that she would give birth. Now, he wanted the children too, of course, amen. But his care was for his wife and he prayed diligently for her. And guess what? She gave birth not only to one, but two sons, two twins, Jacob and Esau. So I'm gonna write up here, third of all, he prayed for his wife to give birth. Okay? Prayed for his wife to give birth. I believe he knew she was discouraged. And I think, no doubt, he had the desire to be a dad himself, but he was also praying diligently for his wife because her desire was to be a mother. Now, the last thing that I'd like to tell you, we're told that Isaac was a very successful man. Just like Abraham, his dad, uh, he was very wealthy, very successful. But one thing that I like about Isaac is Abraham in his day, which was his dad, 
Abraham had dug many wells, wells of water. Well, folks, over the years, those wells had been stopped up by the enemies, just basically trying to um, discourage God's people and make them leave. The wells had been stopped up. Well, we're told that Isaac went back and he redug all the old wells that his father Abraham had put down. So he redug the wells. Of Abraham okay now that may not seem like much but folks I think in a way it was to honor his dad one of the best works that his dad had done was digging these many wells so that God's people the Israel people could have that water Isaac honored his dad by redigging him and provided for many people that way so folks, this is the story of Isaac. As I said a few moments ago, um, he may not be as well-known and famous as Peter, but I ask you to please consider which one's in story inspires you the most, because I believe they're both very, very inspirational. So I hope you've enjoyed this today. Please cast your vote by texting me your vote or by commenting on this YouTube video by putting your vote on there. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday. Our next video will be Andrew the Apostle and Barnabas from the book of Acts. It ought to be a good one. So we'll see you then. Have a great day and God bless you.